are listening to the most original talk radio station anywhere. We are LA Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio. Welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. Our show is broadcast every Sunday from 5 p.m. to 5.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, our show will help you to question your career reality. Now, this show is for you if you were, are, or might be considering a career in the entertainment industry. Our guests will provide you with advice and tips and resource information on how and what it takes to successfully pursue a career in show business. Our guests work in various professions of entertainment, so that means that we will definitely have someone on the show sooner or later from a career that you are interested. And one of the great things about our show is I have people who, from the very highest of the spectrum, uh, Oscar winners, Emmy Award winners, Tony winners, winner, 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 um, down the line to intermediate. And I also have beginning people on the show because I really like to cover the whole broad spectrum of the entertainment industry, not just uh, one end. So I like for people, because I get so many emails uh, from people who say, well, I want to hear what it's like to to struggle. I want to know if I'm coming out there, I'm going to struggle and I want to know what it's like. So bring some real people on there, some people that I can relate to. So uh, I do that as well. So you will hear everything. Now, if you want to check out our past guests, read their bios, listen to their interview instantly or download one of our shows, uh, go to the LA Talk Radio website, uh, latalkradio.com and you click on the link at the top of the website it says channel one you scroll down look for the graphic of our show question reality and all you do is click on the link and this takes you directly from the home page which is where you're going to listen to us from this takes you directly to our archive page and this is where you can view the list of all of our past guests read their bios again and download the show or listen to it right from the computer our shows are also available for download on iTunes under the podcast section And uh, you just type in Question Reality Radio in the search box. I'm sure you know how to do it, but just in case. And then we're also available on Stitcher.com, Stitcher.com. If you want to find out about our future guests, you have to go to an entirely different website, and that is the official Question Reality website, and that's where we post all of our guests for not only the remaining year, but also next year. We are very, very fortunate. Our show has become so popular. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my fans and guests and everyone that's contributed. Uh, We are booked until June of next year, and I've got, like, so many on the waiting list, and I just can't book anymore. I said, that's it. June's the cutoff time, and then we're going to see what happens. But uh, thank you so much. If you want to see who those guests are, go to questionrealityshow.com, questionrealityshow.com. Very exciting, exciting guests coming on uh, next year. So today we have another incredible guest today. And as I was telling you earlier, we have people from various, various uh, levels of entertainment. And today I'm very excited about bringing this guest on. His name is Chance Harlem Jr. He is an actor. You can check him out on Facebook under Chance Harlem, H-A-R-L-E-M. Or Twitter under Chance Harlem Jr. He also has this wonderful, wonderful uh, demo reel video on Vimeo.com, V-I-M-E-O.com. And I highly suggest you go there because his demo reel is awesome. He is such a great actor. I was so impressed with him. You know, I get so many submissions every day and every week. And it's really, really hard to, to bring everyone. There's only like 52 weeks in the year. So I have to be very, very, very selective. And I, I, I chose this guy because I was so impressed with his acting. He is a rock star in acting. This guy definitely is going to be uh, opposite Denzel Washington one day, probably 
possibly Denzel Wellesley will be doing a co-star role with him or maybe a feature part because he's going to be the star one day. No offense, Denzel. I love you. But this guy, Chance Harlem, is really a fantastic actor. I really, really honestly, uh, if you are a casting director out there, this guy is the one that you want to call in for an audition for uh, any type of action part. Um, I don't know if he does comedy. I didn't see anything comedy on his reel. We'll have to find out from him. But he really can rock the drama part. So check that, uh, check his demo reel out on Vimeo.com. Again, Chance Harlan Jr. Um, now, today we're going to be asking him. He is from, I would say, and I hope he doesn't like hit me in the head with a rock, but I would say he's in the intermediate class. Um, he didn't just come out here. He's been out here for a while. He's booked many, many, many different projects. So I'm going to put him in the intermediate to uh, intermediate, I would say intermediate uh stage of his career and we're going to ask him questions like what do you feel the biggest obstacles of being an actor are because he's going to have a different perspective than someone like Jay Hugley, who was on my show, who's one of the stars of Treme, uh, a totally different perspective. So very interested to find out. We're going to ask him uh, what his main focus is on being an actor again at his stage and also what jobs uh, can you get to supplement your acting career? Very interesting, depending on who it is, what their answers are. So we'll find out today. Now, I want to tell you, as promised last week, we are going to debut the latest hit single from one of our past celebrity vocalists, Vasi Caragorio. So remember, when we were doing the interview with her, I think you remember, we everyone was waiting so patiently for her to come on. She was in New York. She was doing an interview, uh, I think, for one of the late night shows. And then it was like halfway during the show, we were finally able to get her on. And then she was catching a cab to go to another interview. But she really rocked her interview. She really did. She she did for being so stressed. Uh, this latest song is called Could This Be Love? And we're going to debut this about 5.30. So you have to stay tuned. This is a very, very cool song. Now, Vassie recently, as you know she one of her songs was uh in the movie uh cabin in the woods she's also the voice for the 2012 victoria's secret campaign nike campaign chevy sketchers espn if you listen to bravo you hear her little jingle all the time you're my desire you know i can't sing but uh, yeah uh and if you absolutely can't wait you can go to youtube to see the music video which stars this gorgeous creature vasi caragoros herself and it is a really cool video original very creative kudos to the creator of this video creation i love these dolls these dolls are wild uh you can also go to her website kissmyvassy.com i love that website name kissmyvassy.com wish i would have thought of that uh but it would be kissmyassy.com okay so uh real quick i want to tell you you know i'm always stressing on the show Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the acting part is great. The singing part is great. The modeling, all of the craft part of entertainment is wonderful. But what do I always say? You've got to know the business aspect, business, 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 because it is called show business. So you do need to know your business. The more you know about your business, the more you're going to improve your stance in life. So there is a class I want to tell you about. It's called the business of acting and it is being uh, 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 given by uh, Ty Harmon, and he's with Susan Goddard Smith Casting. And Ty Harmon has worked in uh, just various, various facets of the entertainment industry his entire career. And he had the opportunity to really learn the talent agency business from the legendary Ed Lamato and became a talent agent at ICM. And he was kind of looking for more of a creative endeavor. So what he did is he became a casting executive at uh, the Fox Network, working on shows like one of my favorites, 90210, Melrose Place. Love it. I'm so sad that's gone. Uh, Ally McBeal, The X-Files. 
And then he uh, uh, also he's also been a casting executive at Universal Television and TNT. And as an independent casting director, Ty has worked on uh, the American Pie franchise, HBO's Generation Kill and the television series, which Albert and I, my husband, go crazy over Warehouse 13 and Alpha is two of our favorites. Uh, He also has worked on Shake It Up, The Game, Girlfriends and just too many pilots to mention. It would be like the whole show. So. So check him out on IMDb, Ty, T-Y-H-A-R-M-A-N, and he is going to have classes uh, starting Tuesday at 7.30, no, what is it? Thursday, so gosh, Thursdays starting at 7.30, uh, $225, really a bargain when you break it out. The classes will start November the 8th. Uh, November 15th and then 1129 what's that November 29th and then December the 6th and again if you want to find out more about that class email me at priscillaleona.com uh, or you can go directly to their website they have some really fantastic classes over there um, it's uh, called ACW, Actors Creative Workshop, and you can go directly to their website, Actors Creative Workshop, I think I just said that, .com, ActorsCreativeWorkshop.com. They also have uh, a website, Truly Acting. They have both of them. It goes to the same place, but they have wonderful classes, so check out their website. Okay, that is the tip for the actors today. Now, let's talk briefly about our guest today, Chance Harlem Jr. Now, from what I understand, Chance's mother always encouraged Chance to stay busy with positive activities and to not be afraid to try new things. And he began to pursue his lifelong dream at age 17. And he is mostly self-taught, which is one of the reasons I found him fascinating. Because I tell you, everybody's like, oh, I got to take this class. I got to take that class. And yes, you do have to take classes. But I found it so fascinating that this guy who has natural God-given talent, he has taught himself. And he did that by uh, choosing prominent African-American actors such as Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman and Will Smith, among others, as his role models. And what he did was he read every every book that he could get his hands on to learn the principles of acting. And by studying these men and practicing daily, he basically designed his own techniques and methods and tailored them to create his own unique, distinguishable style. And it's working for him because he has, uh, as I said before, he has booked several commercials, music videos, shorts, and independent films. And he's currently working on roles in some very, very, very exciting upcoming feature films. So we're going to find out, is it possible? Do we need to go to classes or can we just follow Chance's style and learn on our own? We're going we're gonna to see maybe both. And without further ado, let's welcome the wonderful Chance Harlem on the show. Hey! How you doing? How you doing? My God, Chance, I'm so impressed with you. Can I not tell you how many times have I had? How many times have I told you that I send you Facebook messages <laughs> and I keep telling you? I just really, really am. You are just such an incredible actor. I need to see you on the big silver screen. We need to get you there. No, I know. No, thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate all the support. You, you definitely have been very supportive, very supportive, and I, but I really do appreciate it. So well, you do well. You, any, you are welcome because I tell you, anybody who sees your demo reel on Vimeo dot com, they are. I'm after today's interview. I'm praying that they go and check you out because they will all be clamoring to get their hands on you. Now, let's start with uh, a question I asked every guest. When you want, were a little itsy-bitsy Chance Harlem Jr., uh, <laughs> what did you want to be or do when you were a child? I can guess, but I'm just saying maybe you wanted to be a superhero or something, so I always like <laughs> Oh, no, no superhero. No superhero. Um, I, when I was little, I actually, uh, I think it was the NBA. I think I was really into basketball. And uh, so I wanted to be a basketball player. And so did you did you play a lot of sports in school and ouch oh I hurt myself. Yeah, yeah. What did yeah, you a lot of, 
a lot of basketball. That's really what it was. I was just like I'm the type of person that um, if I find something I'm interested in, I get obsessed, and then I just that's all I do. I consume myself with whatever that particular interest is at the time. So it was just all basketball all day, all night, eat, okay. sleep. It's the dream basketball. So, so you played, I imagine, in in high school. Yeah, I played in high school, but actually, um, what happened was I I got the acting bug early. Uh, I caught that like around maybe twelve or thirteen, and that was always in the side, like kind of in the side pocket, so to speak. And um, so when I got to high school, though, I was still interested in basketball, but by that time, um, I was really interested in acting, but I just didn't have that courage yet to go out and um, go after it. So I was kind of playing the middle. What happened that uh, you went from being a basketball fanatic at 12 or 13 that that made you decide, hey, I want to be an actor? What happened? Who did you see? What did you do? Yeah, um, this story, I feel, now that I'm older, I always feel kind of, I feel almost dumb in a way with the story. But what happened was um, I was watching um, a movie. I, I saw the movie Glory uh, with Matthew Broderick and um, Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman. And I saw the movie A Preacher's Wife with um, Whitney Houston and uh, Denzel Washington. And I didn't know that that was Denzel in both movies. What? Um, Obviously, obviously, of course, you know, Glory came out years before, but by the time I saw it, it was I saw him around the same time. And um, yeah, I, I thought Denzel was so amazing in Glory, I mean, both movies, actually, but I didn't know it was the same person. And when I found out, I was like, that is what I want to do, because it was like magic to me at the time. And I was like, that's amazing that he made me believe he was two different people. So I was like, I want to be able to do that. So that's my first quote. Wow. Well, that that that's that that must be a great great compliment to Denzel Washington. You know, a lot of, yeah, I'm sure it will be. I, I I would be complimented no matter who said it, I'd be complimented. And you know, another a, per, a person who I think is very chameleon like uh is someone named Gary Oldman and I swear that guy just doesn't get enough credit and I, I you I, I sometimes I even know he's in the film because I always check people out before I watch a film and I and I'm watching the film and I'm like well where is he where is he and they've got mm-hmm. him in makeup and mask and you don't even know him but then you look and say oh yeah that's him but sometimes he doesn't have any makeup on and I still don't know it's him that's right. how great he is so I know how impressive and exciting that is because you just get tired of seeing the same old actor and as the <laughs> every damn movie over and over so yes. it's it's exciting that you you know he's in there and not really know that it's him. So that's great. Now, I understand, of course, you're a self-taught actor, which is very exciting for me because I have not had a self-taught actor on the show. And I want to ask first, how, why and how did you elect to go down that path of, of teaching yourself rather than taking classes? Is it because you lived in an area of Philadelphia that didn't have a lot of acting classes and it wasn't available to you or, or why did you decide to do that? Um, you know, actually Philadelphia has a, you know, very rich and, and deep and very uh, artsy culture to it in general. So it was classes. It's just, to be very honest, um, I couldn't afford the classes. I couldn't okay. afford to to take any type of classes, and, and I didn't want to ask my mother. And I, my mother would have definitely uh, scraped and saved mm-hmm. and sent me in any class I wanted to go to. But I didn't want to put her through that. I wanted to try to do it on my own. And uh, being that, hey, I couldn't afford it, so um, I, I did the next best thing. I would just scrape up, like, you know, $17, and I would go to Borders or any bookstore, and I would just start buying a bunch of um, acting technique books and I would read them over and over and I would try it and I'd apply it and I would and that was also an extra. I started out doing a bunch of extra work and and he said I can get on commercials, uh feature films and I would ask a lot of questions and I would listen. And I just kept you know, little by little I kept improving here and there. But it started out without a necessity. I wanted to do it and I didn't see that I didn't think that not going to a class could stop me. I felt like that would be I'd be an excuse. So I said, Hey if I want to do it I need to go do it. 
how impressive is this, people? Now, I swear to God, there is just no excuse for you. Do you see what Chance Harlem did? He took it upon himself. He did not burden his mother with any financial woes, and he just took it upon himself to go out and take the initiative and to study however he could. That is a person who wants to do it, and his motto is where there's a will, there's a way, and he found a way. That is so impressive. That is the most impressive thing that I've heard in a long, long time. And you, um, you. You, you should be commended for that. And, 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 you know, not only you went to Borders, which is fantastic, but a lot of people, it doesn't even dawn on them, Chance, that they can actually go to the library. There is, there oh, yeah. Are, yeah, you know, if some, yeah. if you can't afford to buy a, bo- a book at Borders and you want to be an actor, go to the library. You get free books. You can check them out. Then you can keep them, read them. They have everything that you could possibly need at the yeah. library. People forget, Chance, that there is a library where you can get things for free. So if you yeah. are not in a financial situation to be able to even buy a book, that should not stop you because you can go to your local library and find books that you need. So thank you for bringing that up, Chance, because that was a great opportunity for me to bring up the library, which I think uh, a lot of people forget about now with the internet and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so when you told... Now, what's your mother's name? Uh, Eunice. Well, Eunice. Now, when you told Eunice, Eunice, Mom, Eunice, I want to be an actor. I've been studying on my own. What did Eunice say to you? Oh, she was. She told me this to go, go do it. She said, "You can do it. I believe in you. You have a, all the talent in the world." She said, "I, I believe you'll be successful. Go do it." And so yes. my mom always anything anything I ever wanted to do, she was always very supportive. I mean, she's very honest. I mean, she's very honest. She's not. She's she's never um, hidden me from any criticism. But you know, coming from her, she she tells me everything out of love. So whenever she criticized something. You know, like a, be a headshot, whatever. She, it was good for me though because I didn't have anybody else. Like she was like my first uh, manager in a way. Yeah, um, she, she was your really, she was your right. momager, like the the Kardashian, right. the momager, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, she didn't she didn't really do anything as far as I mean, as far as you know, getting the the, the jobs because right. she wanted me to she wanted me to stand on my own. But whenever I needed advice or, I, or whatever, I was feeling down. She wouldn't let me quit because I mean it was it was times where I, I I definitely thought about stopping and she actually was very adamant about me not stopping. She was she was not going to allow me to stop once I started. So and I appreciate it and I love her so much for that to this day. Well, I love her so much for it too because you are on you are on the path to greatness. I think I'm still like a big uh, fan. So, so I know Eunice did the right thing. Now, let me ask: a lot of people uh, are not fortunate enough to have a mother like Eunice, and they are in situations where their parents are not encouraging for them at all uh, when they are told that they're pursuing a career in entertainment. What advice would you have? to give them uh, if they don't have supportive parents or anyone that is supportive about them pursuing a career and they are not financially well off to be able to go out on their own and to, to get headshots and take classes or whatever, besides our advice of the, of the bookstore and the library, what advice would you give them? How do they get support? Where do you get support and encouragement from? If you don't get it from, you don't have parents to get it from. Um, I would say you got to get it from yourself first of all. Anyway, like my mother always made sure uh, that I was uh, very confident in, in in my own abilities, and she made sure that I I was um, just sure of myself. She she made sure I had my own self confidence going. So I would tell anybody. I mean, you may not. It may, it may seem like you may not have anybody at the moment, but if you have yourself and you believe in what you're doing. You know, you'll turn people around, even if you don't. You you have to. In this type of business, you really have to uh, stand on your own, too, and you have to have confidence in yourself. And if you really want it that bad, you just have to do it. I mean, you say, you can't let any anybody else dictate what you want to do. If it's, if it's something you're really passionate about, you have to. You just have to. That is true. Now, what do you feel in your own experience since you've started uh, your pursuit of being an actor? What do you feel are the biggest obstacles in general of being an actor? Maybe from your own personal experience, maybe you saw other uh, other obstacles from another actor. What do you feel that they are? 
Um, I, honestly, I feel like the biggest obstacle with being an actor or anything in life, I kind of feel like the biggest obstacle is yourself because, you know, we tend to get in our own way a lot. And once you get out of your own way, um, th there aren't many other obstacles because if you just say, I'm going to do this at all costs, there, there are no obstacles. But so I say it's really you can get in your own way, and um, and we do that a lot, you know, because it's very easy. It's very easy to get discouraged. It's very easy just to, you know, we go through a lot of drive. We call it drive months where you don't get any work or auditions, and it's very easy to just, just say, hey, man, maybe this is the wrong thing. But that's, you know, that's it's, it's so easy to look at that negative that negative side. You have to just stay positive. So. It's, it's just one of the things where I say, get out of your own way. You can't, that's a big obstacle for me personally is just getting out of my own way. Like, Cause I would just start to question like, man, maybe, maybe this is wrong or maybe this is that. And also I would say, like, don't compare yourself to somebody else. And you might have a friend who's an actor or again, not even just acting any, any kind of profession. You might have a friend who's doing something similar and they may be a little further along than you are. You shouldn't compare yourself to them because your journey will be different from their journey. So it's it's a, it's more about just staying grounded, staying positive, staying focused, and just getting out of your own way. That is so true. A lot of of my friends who are actors, they do tend to to tell me that they feel a little bit down because their friend maybe booked a commercial or two commercials and this and that. And they booked like five things and they got rejected from a couple auditions. And it's like that, that is their journey and you have your own journey. And that should right. not, that should not discourage you. I mean, it's normal that you're going to feel a little bit sad about it, but you should right. use that. I mean, you wouldn't be human if you didn't, but you should mm -hmm. use that as a motivator to say, Hey, maybe they're working harder than me, or maybe, I got to try this or that. Look for reasons to, to use it as a, uh, a motivator to propel you to something else that you need to do. That's what I say. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, what do you feel uh, should be the main focus uh, as an actor? What should be your main focus for a beginning actor? What do they need to focus uh, on? My, the main focus is, is something that I, I still focus on, it, and, and I just say it's, it's growing as an actor, being open to growing and learning as an actor, because acting, um, it's, it, it's really about being alive and being real in, in those moments, and you should just never, as an actor, you should never feel like you learned enough. I think I heard that from Morgan Freeman, actually, when I first started acting about I, I hope I'm not misquoting them, but I believe it was Morgan Freeman who said, like, you know, he's always grown as an actor. Um, and, and that just made me feel like, I think he's an incredible actor, by the way. And for him to say that, I was like, wow. You know, he, he said he, he's saying he's still always growing and learning. I think when you open yourself up like that, it's much much easier to to actually have that growth. Um, I try to just, just stay very humble and again, listen to a lot of people. And listening is really big. I know when I first started acting, listening, to, and I mean listening to the, when you're actually acting in scenes, listening to the other actor was very hard at first because I'm so worried about my lines. Yes. And, I was, and, oh, I wasn't, uh, yeah. Uh, that, was, I learned not to do that. I mean, it took a while, but you have to learn, like, it, it, it's, I'm, and I tell a lot of actors, like, I know it seems hard at first, but once you let that go and you actually just listen to what the other person is saying, your line and everything will just come to you. It's so much more natural and free-flowing that way. But when you first start out, I understand that you don't want to look like you don't want to look like you're a rookie when you're first starting out. So messing up on lines and everything, just, you're trying so hard not to that you kind of, like, don't listen. So, so yeah, I said just, just listen, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up, to listen, because there are so many times when I watch um, – uh, shows maybe go to some um usually i think i find this when when i go to watch the sci-fi some movies on sci-fi but sometimes it's when i go to independent um uh what is screenings and you can mm -hmm. just look at an actor and you can tell when they're waiting to say their lines it's so mm -hmm. obvious the camera catches everything people. yes so <laughs> we all yes, it know does. that when you're listening or when you're waiting to say your line. So if right, you're right. 
So maybe if you're not booking parts or maybe if you book something and maybe you're not booking something else because you're using that thing on your demo reel, look at it again because you might be waiting for your lines. And that may be right. why you're not getting cast for something because we can see it. Don't do it. Listen, listen, listen. And it is. It's really hard because you're like, oh, my God, my line's coming up. My line's coming up. Yep. I got I got to yeah. be prepared. <laughs> and then you, we see it. So that's a really, that's something you really, really honestly should work on as an actor for sure. And I'm so glad you brought that up. We have got some exciting questions left for Chance Harlem Jr. But as promised, I need to play this hot new single from our celebrity vocalist today. Her name is Vassie Caragalos. Uh, I can never pronounce her name right. She's going to kill me. I can't pronounce foreign names people will you please <laughs> Her, it's Kara oh god I'll spell it K-A-R-A-G-I-O-R-O-S Kara Gorios oh lord forgive me Vassie I'm playing your song so please forgive me alright so we are going to play this song it's called Could This Be Love we're going to play this and then we're going to come back and we're going to hear more really great advice and tips from Chance Harlem Jr. so uh, stay tuned listen to this and without further ado Cassie Could This Be Love I thought it was going to play. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe it's going to play now. Without further ado, we've got Vasi Karagoros. Could this be love? <laughs> Why is it when I see your name, it's got me all busted up, butterflies in my brain. And every time you call, I can't seem to get it right. Why am I up till 2 a.m.? Now it's quarter past three, boy, you did it again. And I can't seem to get a cheeky smile out of my mind. I feel like a fool when I lose my cool. I'm just trying to impress you, boy, you got me sprung and I don't
it up, butterflies in my brain. And every time you call, I can't seem to get it right. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on L.A. Talk Radio. Wow! Did we love that chance or what? Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually, I know Vassie, so um, oh, I, I you heard the song. Oh, do you For real? Yeah, yeah. How do you yeah. know her? How do you know Vassie? Um, through uh, her publicist, uh, Josh, Josh Mitchell. Josh Mitchell! I was, yeah, I worked with him on some projects, and um, I went to uh, one of her performances and met her. She's really cool, really down to earth. She really is. cool person. She's really talented, really talented. She really is. And boy, is she hot. So if you want to see her, go check out her video again on YouTube. It is called Could This Be Love? Check it out. Oh, you'll love this. Very creative. I love those dolls. Crazy dolls. All right. Let's get back to you, my darling. Now, I a lot of people come out here to pursue a career in acting, and they find that they have to get jobs such as um, – bartending and waitressing and things like that. Do you know of any other jobs that people could do to supplement their income other than the typical bartender waitress type job? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been doing uh, uh, promo events um, and uh, basically do the promo events where, you know, you're setting up in some part of LA all over basically and you just have these different products to, depending on what um, company has hired the company that hired you and you pro- promote their products. So uh, promo events are really flexible. They pay pretty well. Um, the only thing is, you know, it's, it's like uh, you got to sign up to a certain company and then they pick a bunch of people. But so it's not really like you get guaranteed work, but you can sign up with a bunch of companies. I, I'm probably signed up with like five of them and um, you work the promo events. I think they're pretty good. That is a fantastic idea. Now, how would you find these companies? Is Are there websites? Where do you go? What are they called? Um, it's a bunch of websites. I hope I can re- remember one of the names. Um, I believe one is one might be the Hype Agency. Uh, it's because there's so many of them that I forget. I get them all um, clustered together. So I don't want to say the wrong name, but uh, one, I think, is the Hype Agency. Um, and it's a couple others. I mean, it's a bunch of You can Google it, though. I, I'll just... I Googled it, and I came up with a, with some other ones. And what, word what, did you, what did you type? Uh, promo event companies? Is that what you yep. use for your Google word? Okay. Yeah. All right. Promo All events right. in L.A. And also, when you see people outside, though, people that are, like, you know, handing out stuff and they're in front of, like, a, like a, they have a little setup, like a little tent and, and little products they hand out. Mm-hmm. Talk to them. You know, just ask them. That those guys I are usually doing that. promo events. I love that. Oh, my God. As soon as I see people with samples, I make a beeline right on over there. <laughs> I do, too. Especially if it's food, honey. I'm going right over there. I can smell it at 150 feet. Where's the demo food? Where's the demo food? Me too. I love that. I will never say no. (laughs) You know what? I, as an actor, I would think like if you come here and you're and you're and you're limited on funds, you should find out where all the promo events are, (laughs) and you can eat like every day. You can just eat the samples, right? You can. You can have a nice little diet off of that. That's right. It'll keep you thin, but at least you'll get your nutrients and vitamins, for God's sake. Oh, God. Now, what do you like most about your chosen perfector, uh, perfector, your chosen profession of being an actor? What do you really, really like about it? Oh, acting. Um, wow. It's it's just the whole the whole craft of it. Like it's it's kind of like. Um, you really get to get away from your own personal problems and you get to embody this whole other person. And it's kind of cool. I mean, cause, cause for me, um, when you miss out on certain things, like, like I didn't go to my prime in high school and things of that nature. So when you get to play a character who is going to prime or you get to play uh, a character who, um, let's say you play a role where, you know, they're, they're a golfer or whatever it may be. It's things you may have never experienced, and you get to step inside their shoes and, and experience it. And I it, feel the really same way. Fun. You get to do so I mean, you get to be and do yes. p- things and be people that you never 
ever got yeah. to, to do. It's like you're living so many lives as an actor, and you especially are. when you get to the, say, Denzel Washington level, where if you have to play, um, say, you have to be a skydiver, they will send your ass to skydiving school for everything. Exactly. If you have to exactly. walk, they teach you how to. So you learn all of these skills, and you don't have to pay shit. They pay for everything. <laughs> so that's not that's also a perk. That's a perk, right? I mean, I, that's I, a big perk. I would think people would go into be an acting just for the free knowledge that you get to, to have when you, well, you do have to work up that lever. Dark. I mean, I said, when you start out as an extra, you're lucky if you get a damn hot dog and a bag of chips. I mean, that's true. And they, they will, they will beat your ass down with a whip if they catch you near the arts and cra- I mean the craft truck and it's for oh, the yes. principles. God forbid an extra wander over to the wrong side of the line. <laughs> I know I, yes. I, when I started out and I was uh, doing extra work because I believe in starting from the bottom and I couldn't wait to do extra work. So I remember I ventured over to the crafts, uh, the craft truck and I got myself a nice, I'm like, oh, this is really good food. Little did I know it was a hot dog and bag of chips I'm supposed to be eating. I'm over there, <laughs> I'm over there snacking on the, the uh, chicken card on blue and boy, did I get it. They just reprimanded yeah. me. But I was like, well, I'm still going to eat it. Take Try taking it back. You know, <laughs> I don't blame you. Back. <laughs> but yeah, I love your point. It's, there's so many things that you get to, that you're taught, and if it requires that you need experience, it's paid for, and you do get to be different characters. Now, first of all, I can't believe you did not get to go to the prom. A handsome gentleman like yourself, <laughs> I you think those women would be beating your door down to take you to prom. So I don't even know what that was about. But the thing is that, yes, you do get to go to a prom and you get to go, uh, you get to be a serial killer. Or you get to be a oh, really yeah. I mean, you can explore. It's like it, it being an actor. It it it's only limited by your imagination. So yes. whatever yes. you want to be, you can you can play. There's a character to be played. Am I right? All all the time, all you the time, and it's zombies? very therapeutic. Yeah, if it loves if you love zombies and horror movies, you can go. You can definitely get a job as a zombie for sure. There's oh like, yeah. No, for sure. But yeah, and it's it's it, isn't that great? To, to, it, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to, to if you get to be an actor. You really no, just, it is. You have to find a job to supplement your income. That is that is the yeah. Scene. That's the hard part. It, it really is because it, it it can be a very expensive craft. I mean, headshots and thank God, you know, with the online, I imagine you're with Actors Access and LA LA Casting and um, yeah. There, there's so many because now things are being cast. They're not necessarily accepting the headshots and the vanilla folders anymore. Most casting directors right. are via websites, but you still have to pay for them. Now, they are significantly less than you would have to pay sending out a million headshots like back in the day in the manila folders. But it runs about $54, $64 a year, which I think really is economical compared to the old manila headshot folder thing, don't you think? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, there's so many ways uh, now to to find casting um, notices. It's just that it is so many of them that's and a lot of them are paid that it does add up if you don't um you know if you don't keep it, keep an eye on it it adds up but yeah it's so many ways to get out there and uh i just think that um you know we got to utilize that we got to utilize that now absolutely because most ca- most of the top casting directors do go first and foremost to actors access uh, they go to uh LA casting they go to breakdown express um there's a uh, mm-hmm. Extras Access, which is a sister company of Actors Access, because it is very easy for them. Uh, they can look at mm-hmm. your demo reel, look at your headshots, and then they can do everything via uh, the internet. So it's it, 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 it's cheaper, I think. I think the most expensive thing now is to get the headshots, but you yes. don't have to. <laughs> yes, it is. it is. But you know what? It really, with the competitive, unfortunately, in this economy, the photographers, and I'm talking about the really great photographers, they are doing a serious reduction in their prices so you can get good headshots. Um, so 
there, there are things you can do. You can get a friend to get a camera if you can't afford it. And if they're a photography student, they can take a picture. There's, there's always, uh, you can go to any of the art schools and, uh, there are photography students. You can ask them to take a picture. It may not be like super fantastic. Great. But again, you never know. If you don't have the money, you don't right. have the money. You got to do what you got to do. Now, yeah. we talked about what you liked most about your profession. Uh, same question with what do you like least about the profession? Again, I'd say it's the money spending it on headshots. That's what I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think what I like least would have to be, I mean, the money comes with it because I guess you're investing in yourself. Um, what do I like least? Um, hmm. Spending money really? I mean, on headshots, for sure. Oh, I got another one. Traveling on the freeway from audition to audition, the gas got to pay. It all comes down to money-related things for me, when yeah, it the least, because there's nothing, hard. there's nothing really about the acting. I mean, once you get there, right, right. I mean, everything's right. super groovy. Um, I'm not even going to say rejection, because I think of every no as a yes in disguise. So that's... Yeah, I mean, and it builds character. You need to get rejected a couple times. Stay you humble. <laughs> you have to realize it's not personal. They, they right, it's not. They are looking for a look, and if you don't have it, or you, it's just, just don't take it personally. The next audition, you're probably going to get it. So, look at it right. like. So, I would just say uh, maybe having to spend the money and the time on the freeway is is are my least. Yeah, I think thing. I think money is number one. Just, just all the money, you know. After you um, if you look at it, all the money in general, yeah, it kind of it kind of eats away at you because if you don't have the money at that point. You know, you have to somehow get the money because it, it, it all it all leads to one. Like all of it is together. What I mean is, as in, like you need a good headshot to get an audition. Then sometimes you need you need to, to get the job or book the actual job to get the money to get the headshot. So it's like a, a cycle. It is. <laughs> and, it um, is, isn't yeah. it? And then of course you need. I mean, you 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 just gotta try to keep yourself looking the same so you can use the same right. hot for like five years. <laughs> just keep yeah. your skin yeah, looking good. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the conditioner, the moisturizer. Try to keep yourself looking good and use your same headshots. And little yeah. tip, little tip, use black and white. No, I don't want to say that. But that keeps you looking good for five years. But I'm not going to say that. You didn't hear that. Uh, they'll follow that. Um, okay, so uh, we've got about two minutes. What is going on with you? you got some exciting things coming up, I understand. you got got uh, your feature film version of the award-winning short Asbury Park. Tell us about yes. that. And then uh, you got a feature film project in development called Rise to the Rhythm, which is heavy dance. Yes. Woo. And then another film early in development as well about uh, what well, your favorite topic, basketball player. So tell us about those real quick, where we can see it. What's oh, okay. Going? Um, okay. Um, Asbury Park. Um, again, it's, it's a short film. It was a short film. It's an award-winning short film. Um, doing the feature version. Version. Uh, Robert Anderson is the writer, director of it. Um, he's still developing that. He just got married. Congrats to him. So I know he's after he comes back off the honeymoon, he's going to finish everything up. We're going to move forward with that project. Um, Rise to the Rhythm um, is being produced by uh, Jenna Franco. She's a, a friend of mine. Um, we got, I know that she had uh, Robert Townsend's daughter, Scott Townsend, I believe was attached to the project so far. Um, that's going to be a great project. Again, it has a lot of heavy dance and uh, music influence. I think it's going to be really, really cool when it comes out. And uh, the basketball project is untitled right now. But I know it's like some type of underdog story about a basketball player coming off an injury, but he's um and he goes to a new team and he um basically is trying to find himself, at, find the leader within himself. I'm sorry to lead this team to victory. There's a bunch of like underdogs. It's kind of like um I think a really inspiring story. I think actually all three are inspiring stories. All the stories have a similar similarity where the one the main character has to overcome obstacles to reach a goal. And I think that's that's really important. I think everybody can um can like uh just just identify with that. I think everybody will like all these films though. Now in, in Asbury Park, uh what's the name of your character? Uh give us the name of your character in each of these and, and what what the role is of the character, real quick. Okay, uh Asbury Park, uh the role of Colin, um and basically yeah, he he's a young kid but turned him back to his hometown of Asbury Park, New Jersey. 
um, seeking redemption for a, a horrible um, accident that happened that he was a part of. Um, Rocks to the Rhythm, uh, I played Justin. Um, he is the best friend to the lead role of a, a, a role named Nina. And, and his girlfriend is actually Nina's, uh, like, I guess, enemy in, in the film. His girlfriend's name is Krista. Um, and then the basketball film, which is untitled still, that's the lead role of Jaden right now. The character's name is Jaden. And, um, and, yeah, like I said, I'm just really excited about all three of them. Well, I'm excited, too, because I'm excited, excited about – I'm excited about Jaden because you play the basketball player. We get to see you do some skills. Give us some leg work. <laughs> do some drippity yeah, yeah. droppity up on us with the ball. <laughs> yeah. Now, how are we going to find out about these? Do you have a website uh, other than – are you going to posting on Facebook, Twitter? How will we find out about this? Yeah, I'll, I'll post on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I really don't tweet a lot unless it's about a project, something okay. upcoming. And then, um, but Facebook, I'm pretty active on there. Yeah, I haven't done my website. I know my agents and managers have been on me to do my website. I just keep, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I keep pushing it off because I, I'm so picky about how I want some, something to look that I keep, um, I keep just pushing it back like every and time plus I get it's this really- line back. Plus, they're yeah. very expensive. But you know what? I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to send you a message afterwards because, you know, I have a, a website design company. So maybe we can hook something up for you. My number. Oh, yeah. My, 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 because when you become famous, I'm going to force you to make me uh, come down the red. <laughs> uh, behind you do not me at all. Not, I'll say, I did that website for you, Chance. Am I coming on the red carpet? Right. You would never have divorced me. You have tickets to my red card events. <laughs> you, my darling. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and listening to Chance Harlem Jr. Check him out on Vimeo.com, Facebook.com under Chance Harlem, and on Twitter at ChanceHarlemJr.com. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank Eunice for raising such a wonderful oh, thank you. boy. And say goodbye to your fans, Chance Harlem Jr. Hey. Hey, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I want to thank you personally, though, for having me. I really, really appreciate it. It's all definitely a blessing. I'm humbled by it. And uh, just keep supporting me and look out for me. I'll look out for you. I'm going to get you cast into something. Don't you worry about it. Uh, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. See you next week on Question Reality. Bye. <laughs> You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio.